Hey y'all, I'm being reacting to Brand New Animal Episode 4, and I'm gonna start this reaction from the minute and one second mark in one, zero, go. Alright. <laughs> Maybe she's trying to focus on utilizing her abilities and mastering them. <laughs> Oh, okay, never mind. Don't get me wrong, it's cool that she's trying to go back to her human form, but... I think she'd be better served for trying to master the ability she has in her... in her beastman form. form. Oh. Oh. <laughs> hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a shame. Hmm. Oh. All right, that makes sense. Oh, I could see where the potential combo can show up then. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, she's the strange exception. Not that Michi was strange, just the circumstances around her are strange. If... Oh. Okay, that actually explains a lot now. The scary part about this is though that... Is that humans just have such a bigger upper hand seemingly. The only thing about it is, I'm just worried that if she does change back, it might be in a situation where shit hits the fan and she won't be able to protect herself or anyone physically. It's the only thing I'm worried about. Oh boy, I wonder where this is gonna lead. <laughs> Whoa. Do the heads up, the subtitles are slightly off and from where I'm watching the website, so. Oh, okay, so that's it. Ooh. Yo, this, get, this dude's giving me some, like, Kingpin vibes. Only so they're wearing... Why he's wearing all black. Aw, oh, they're making fun for this roll! <laughs> oh, man. Oh! Oh 
my. It's just a terrible way of going down. It just makes you wonder though, you're seeing her look at all the social media, but it just makes you wonder how her parents feel about the whole situation about her daughter being missing. Okay. Uh, and right when she found a potential kindred spirit, too. Oh. Okay. So, talk about things getting dusty now. Oh, it's a good painting of a dolphin and a mermaid. <laughs> Those look adorable. <laughs> the type of connections that girl has. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, okay. At least she's getting rid of the Oh, she ain't a human but Hey, if we're lucky, Michiro can make a new friend. A Beastman friend, potentially. <laughs> oh, man. And honestly, I think her Beastman form is pretty cool, too. That's messed up. Hmm. Kind of like the themes there too where when it comes to music, no matter how much the parents try to limit their children and not get into certain type of media, you ain't gonna be able to stop your child in most cases. And that something say music can be a work of art, it doesn't matter who makes it. Whether the person be of a different race, a different different religion, different social status, or things of that nature. Oh, I like moments like that with your friend. In the flashback. Hmm. Hmm, I wonder why her hand sparkled like that. Whoa! <laughs> Simon and I. All right. Hmm. <laughs> Look at those sparkly nuts. Oh man. It makes me wonder though. Now that she's human, though. Would she actually be able to stay there permanently 
like as if nothing happened. Okay, then that sounds like fun. Hmm. It's understandable. No young individual, or even older individual, should limit themselves from what they can do. They should always try to explore and take risks. So I like Nina's personality there. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, boys, oh. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, poor, poor worker. <laughs> oh, oh, snap. <laughs> it looked like he was going to bust some nerves when he got angry. Ah, it's... It's the police. Hmm. Oh. I kind of like that bit of world building there. Showing you the contrast between Anima City and the regular human cities there. It actually makes the setting in this series feel much more vibrant and much more natural. I mean, it already felt natural. All right. Although I just have an eerie feeling that Nina and Mitra are going to get involved in a potential fight that isn't going to be something they start, that someone else is going to start. And it's going to leave Mitra no choice but to transform into a beast man again. I mean, I hope I'm wrong and I'm just being a... being like a bit too overly cautious, but... I think the music's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yo, I'm gonna have to listen to this track of the series once it's out. Hmm. 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 now it's giving me an itch to eat some macaroons. Hmm. All right. It's good to see her on wine, emotionally too. Hmm. <laughs> uh. Oh. Oh no 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 no. I was worried for her for a second. All right. I mean, yeah, she is a cute dolphin too. I was thinking that too. But still though, I just hope. Oh. Okay, I hope she actually earnestly really means that. And this ain't some kind of trap or something. Ah, for the most part. Hmm. All right, it's really nice to see her happy. Oh. <laughs> Ugh. I mean, it's a shame that the happy vibes can't keep on going, but... Hmm. 
Yeah, I don't... Whoa, whoa. Okay. It's crazy to think there's more than meets the eye. Okay, the way she's, Lisa's just clapping like that with her eyes closed, it looks eerily suspicious. Or at least she's getting a bad feeling about it. That sixth sense is telling her. Yeah, exactly, I've been feeling that too. But it makes sense why she would misinterpret it that way. Because, and let me explain why. Because Nina, she doesn't seem like she goes around a lot, so she hasn't been in a lot of social situations to be able to, like, grasp when something feels off. So I like that. The, nat the complicule feels like it's natural drama, because it seems way too many series, when they do have drama, it's just completely unnatural at times. Hmm. <laughs> Why well, she shouldn't underestimate the capabilities of people that have a large amount of resources at their disposal, you know? Shit, though. Who would have thought that flip would be that crazy to even attempt to cause a war? And dang, those two are pretty messed up. Oh no, no, no. But even if she is a dolphin, that doesn't make it right to put her in there against her will. She's gonna have to transform. Be up. I knew it. I had a feeling she was gonna transform too. Mm hmm. Gotta admit, that was a badass sequence there by, by Michiru for just a variety of reasons. Because literally, she doesn't have any guarantees of being able to transform back into a human that easily. And that's why I find that sequence to be glorious, because it shows you her selfless, her selflessness. And I like that smile too when she told her, let's go home too. Nina, that was really cute and adorable. And it shows you that Michiru, if it's to protect her friends or a person she cares about, she'll be willing to do some self-sacrificing to actually get it done. Aww. It's really sweet to see her apologize. Even though, honestly... Even though, honestly, I don't think any of those two should be apologizing at all. Uh, they did nothing wrong. Uh, at least they had some fun moments, though. And that's truly what matters. <laughs> okay. Alright, cool. <laughs> uh uh. You gotta pay back what you owe. I mean, I'm taking Chiro's side here. Sometimes you gotta keep people in line when they use your tab. I'm just saying.
Wait, an immortal body? What the? Either that explains why he can take all on all that pain and physical abuse. And I was just wondering too how her parents feel about all this and that's really sweet for them to be making sweet for their daughter. Alright, that, that was a great ending. That actually got to me. Whew. In the gummy in the fields. So, um, I was actually going to rate this an 8.5 out of 10, but since it actually showed you at the very least what one of the, one of the parents actually prepping up a cake for their daughter, I'll be like, you know what? A 9 out of 10. I'm going to bump it up to a 9 out of 10. And honestly, this episode, it was great. Just like the other ones for a variety of reasons. For one, we see when it comes to Neat Studio, she goes through character development because... For one, her goals expanded. She went from just wanting to transform back into a human so that she can go back to a human city to now, after she transforms back, she wants to get to know the Beastmen. So I like that. It shows you that she's becoming much more mature and she's looking for a variety of things in life as in like getting to understand different people and all that. And that's part of maturing in life, like wanting to get to have different experiences, wanting to get to know more individuals, and that makes Michu into a much more dynamic character, and at the same time, it shows her selflessness, where she instantly transforms into a beastman to help save Nina. That was a really cute and adorable sequence there. And additionally, the sequence where, like, Nina doesn't want to go back instantly, it just makes sense when you think about it, because... The episode gives information that she's always sheltered, that her parents don't even let her listen to the music she wants. So naturally, when she has a chance to, like, have a rebellious moment, she ain't gonna want to give that up easily. So it made sense that she wouldn't want to go with Michiru. And I like that. I like characters with flaws that way. But then I liked how afterwards, after she realized things kind of went sour because of her, she apologized. And that was really cute, too. And honestly, I really don't think it was Nina's fault because all things considered, who would imagine you go to a party and someone's going to fucking try to like seal you into a tank? So I like that too. It makes her into a pretty nice dynamic character for the amount of time she was in. And her friendliness was really infectious and it was nice to see. And on top of that, I like how this time, instead of it being Michiru busting Shiro's throats, it's Shiro busting... Michi just chops when he's like, you're going to have to pay back what you owe. And I was like, <laughs> oh, yo, that was, that was freaking hilarious. So that's why this episode really was powerful from a character standpoint. Oh, and then Flip. To find out that he wants to cause a war between beastmen and humans, that sounds like a really major plot point, too. And on top of that, I like the world building because during the series, I was wondering, when it comes to humans and beastmen... How long have they had the relationship? And I like how here you have it presented naturally with the marriages filling in Michiru and us, the audience, at the same time simultaneously. Where it was a situation where they only showed up on people's radars just recently due to like environmental factors. And that's another thing I like there too. Kind of also has the message of if people mess up with the environment too much. Certain things that we want, don't want to appear will appear out of nowhere. And it really has some interesting ties to current day with this thing that must not be named going around. So that's another thing I like about this episode. This episode has a message that could go around and like... That can go around and be relevant for multiple different generations. And then aside from that, what I also like about this episode too was... The comedy, it was strong as always. It was strong to see Michiro bond with the Beastmen too. And the animation art, while it wasn't as pretty as the previous episode, it was still pretty darn good. 
And there was some noteworthy sequence, like when Michiru transformed into a beast man form and like broke the tank, water tank. Sequences like that look good. And that's why I really dug the episode. So now with you all, these are my thoughts on Brand New Animal Episode 4. Be sure to comment down your thoughts on how I feel about more action in the comment section below. Rate the video, share, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys later if you come back for more. Because I'll definitely be reacting to Episodes 5 and 6 once they get subtitled. And yeah. Hopefully the next episodes don't have um, subtitles that don't aren't in sync with the animation by a few seconds. But anyways, y'all, thank you so much for watching my reaction. Have a great and safe day. Bye-bye.